Hi everyone, welcome to STEAM PCB Academy. My name is Aviral. Today we are going to talk about what is crosstalk in a transmission line in terms of aggressor and victim nets and what are the sources of crosstalk in a design. Then we will discuss what is near end and far end crosstalk and how to reduce it in a transmission line along with couple of simulations in Security Aurora 17.4 and Topology Explorer. So let's get started. We will start with first question, what is crosstalk in a transmission line? As its name suggests, crosstalk is transfer of an unwanted signal from one net to adjacent net. And it occurs between every pair of net which are at close proximity of each other. The term net we are using for signals and return path both. We'll understand that in more detail while discussing ground bounds. Now here we are using few terms for the source of noise, we call the aggressor net or active net. For the net on which noise generated due to crosstalk, we call them quiet or victim nets, as you can see on your screen. Now let's talk about what is the origin of crosstalk. How this coupling occurs between two parallel running transmission lines and what is the role of fringe field which cause capacitive and inductive coupling. First we will talk about fringe field if you can recall from written path video. There I have explained how electric field and magnetic field line is spread between signal and return path conductors. These field lines are not just confined to return path. This spread of field lines affect the surrounding conductors as well. We call them fringe fields. As you can see on the screen, if we we'll put quiet net closer to active net, the fringe field effect will be more. But if we'll increase the pitch between these two parallel running tracks, the effect of fringe field will reduce. So we can say that the effect of fringe field is inversely proportional to pitch between parallel running tracks. The only way noise will be picked up by victim net or quiet line is when there is change in voltage or current in aggressor or active net. And that change in voltage and current cause change in electric and magnetic field which will induce current in adjacent conductor. So as a result, these fringe fields arise small capacitance and inductance between two parallel running tracks. And we call them mutual capacitance and mutual inductance. Solution to avoid fringe field noise or to reduce mutual capacitance and inductance, we have to place nets far from each other. In the next step, I'll give you a brief about the simulation of crosstalk in Security Aurora 17.4. And then we will talk about concept of near and far end crosstalk. So let's open Security Aurora 17.4 and here I have done the simulation already. As you can see, I have simulated for one byte group from parallel data bus 0 to parallel data bus 7. And the simulation highlighted all the part which has maximum crosstalk. And as you can see, parallel data 7 and parallel data 5 are highlighted. We have simulated for parallel data bus 7. So that means parallel data 7 is the victim net and parallel data 5 is the aggressor net or active net. From this plot also we can verify the parallel data bus 7 has maximum crosstalk of 110.3 millivolt. And if I'll plot for parallel data 5 as well to see why there is a crosstalk, you can see there is a clear transition of 1 to 0. And due to that, there is a current induced on parallel running tracks data 7. Similarly, you can plot for other victim nets. And here we'll get all other segments which are running parallel to parallel data 7. So in case of XU2, here we have all the list of nets and similarly for U7. So by selecting each net, you can verify how much crosstalk is there because of this aggressor net. Another way to verify is just hover your cursor there. So it will give you all the information for each segment. So if you want me to create a detailed video of step by step process, how I have done this simulation for any layout, let me know in the comment section. Now we are good to go to discuss about near end and far end crosstalk. 
नेक्स्ट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट नियर एंड एंड फार एंड क्रॉस टॉक बिटवीन टू पैरल रनिंग एक्टिव एंड क्वाइट नेट्स सो लेट्स एज्यूम अ सेटअप वेयर वी हैव एक्टिव नेट एंड क्वाइट नेट एंड हेयर बोथ एंड्स ऑफ द क्वाइट नेट आर टर्मिनेटेड टू अवॉइड एनी रिफ्लेक्शन ऑन द लाइन एंड सिमिलरली फॉर एक्टिव नेट द अदर एंड ऑफ द सिग्नल इज टर्मिनेटेड टू अवॉइड रिफ्लेक्शन ऑन दैट सो इन दिस सेटअप द मेजर्ड नॉइज वोल्टेज हैज अ वेरी डिफरेंट पैटर्न for the noise in both ends of the victim nets so to distinguish between these two ends we label the end nearest to the source as near end of the victim net and the noise induced here we call it near end cross talk and similarly the end farthest from the source we call it far end of the victim net and the noise induced there we call it far end cross talk Similarly we can define near end and far end in term of direction of signal traveling Far end will be at the forward direction of signal propagation and near end at the backward direction of signal propagation Let's talk about probing for near end cross talk and far end cross talk on victim nets So when we connect oscilloscope on near end to observe the cross talk we'll see a pattern like this the near end noise rises up quickly and stays there for few nanoseconds and return back to zero so on the active net if we are sending 200 millivolt of signal at quiet net the level is approx 13 millivolt and which is about 6.5% of total signal level on the other side at the far end we'll get really strange response so if we connect cro and observe the noise for same active net parameters the noise on quiet net will be in different shape and its amplitude will be approx 16 millivolt so there we'll see a sharp dip which is 30% of the signal level on active net now i'm going to tell you some equations to estimate near end cross talk and far end cross talk we can estimate the ratio of voltage on quiet line and voltage on signal line in term of mutual capacitance and mutual inductance so the equation will be voltage on quiet line divided by voltage of signal on active track is equal to 1 by 4 cml divided by cl plus lml divided by ln so here cml and lml are mutual capacitance and mutual inductance per unit length of coupled transmission line and cl and ll are as you know it's a capacitance and inductance per unit length of active line so the ratio of voltage on quiet line divided by voltage on signal line of active net we represent it with kb which is known as backward coefficient or near end cross talk coefficient and similarly you can estimate the far end cross talk coefficient which is represented by kf and it is the ratio of voltage at far end of quiet line and voltage at signal line of active net it will be equal to 1 upon 2v so here v is the speed of signal on active net multiplied by cml divided by cl minus lml divided by ln so these are mutual capacitance and mutual inductance and capacitance and inductance per unit length and here v is the speed of signal on active net so this is how you can estimate the far end cross talk coefficient and from that you can calculate the far end cross talk all right so now i'm going to summarize this video by telling you couple of ways or methods we can use to reduce cross talk between parallel running tracks and the first one is you have to increase the pitch between signal tracks second is you have to use solid planes without any cutouts on the return path to avoid any ground bounds third one is keep coupled length short so there will be very minimum cross talk between those fourth is you have to route on strip line layers if you can fifth is do not share return pins in package or connectors because it will also lead to cross talk and last but not the least in case of high isolation required route tracks on different layers so that's it for this video in case you want me to create a video where i'll cover step by step process of simulations how i have done the simulation 
on security aurora 17.4 let me know in the comment section see you in the next video